praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Praise the Lord morning. Jesus. Morning. Praise the Lord. Praise Lord. Amen. Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's, it's good to be alive. Yes, it is. Praise God. It is Amen. good to be alive. Amen. God has been good to us. And uh, so this yes. morning we come before him and just say our souls bless the Lord. All yes. that within us, we bless his soul. Even Psalms 103 said that we yes. bless him. Thank Lord, you, we, he have, and we come that we will not forget the benefits that he has provided for us. And those benefits he named out there in Psalms 103, first five verses. He has forgiven us of all of our iniquities. He healed us of all of our diseases, redeemed our life from destruction. And he has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Yes. yes. And praise God. He filled our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. So, Father, we come before you this morning. We ask your divine will be done in this house, in this place, and in the world, God, that you have delivered. And thank you for deliverance and setting your people free that they may hear what the Spirit of God is saying, that they'll come out of the bondage, out of religion, into Christianity, yes, into Jesus. the will of God. In Jesus' name we praise and thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, you know, a couple of weeks ago in prayer, I heard the Lord say that 2025 was going to be the year to get your house in order. Hmm. And this week he said it was like it's time to share it. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Just get your house in order. Now, anybody know that if you haven't guessed at your house or whatever you're going to do, mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. over or whatever, Mm -hmm. You don't wait till the last minute. To, you know, they come and, you know, you start cleaning up and doing little yeah. things around the house and get, yeah. getting prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So that's the <clears> example <throat> he gave me. It's like, get your house in order. How mm -hmm. many, you know, how many people died um, mm -hmm. in this, this hurricane the last, this, what is it, Helena? Mm -hmm. uh, I, think just in, I think just in North Carolina, mm -hmm. I, I heard, it was like 96 people died. Wow. My point of it is, mm -hmm. they didn't know they were going to die that day. Yeah. But if we get our house in order, in other words, God is saying, stay rapture ready. Get your, mm -hmm. get your life together. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You got to get your house in order. Just like the physical house you get in yeah. order. Yeah. And, you you know, you'll be wanting to impress yeah. people to yeah. come. You know, you don't want dirt here and clothes thrown over you. You want everything <laughs> in order and set to where it looks decent and presentable. Mm. Jesus is coming. So he can come and, and live in that. That is, we, you, if it, anything in your heart that you have not corrected on, you have unforgiveness in your heart, you want to deal with that. Yes. You, you want to get your house in order. You <laughs> want to deal with that because it's actually... Let me let me read this in First Thessalonians, and um, the Apostle Paul uh, talks about. He says, "I tell you directly from the Lord that he who are still living when the Lord comes will not rise to meet him uh, ahead of those who are in in the graves. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a mighty shout and with the stirring cry of an archangel." Uh, and the great trumpet call of God and the believers who are dead will be with first raised from the dead uh, to meet the Lord. And then we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Amen. So we want our house in order because he's coming. That's right. He is coming. He, is he done coming. said he's That's coming. Right. And, and those who don't believe that, I feel sorry for you. All right. But he is coming. He said, get your house and prepare for it. Prepare for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, in the book of uh, <clears throat> Second King, uh, chapter 20, verse 1, it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick well, unto death. And mm -hmm. the prophet I Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said to, unto him, mm -hmm. Thus said the mm -hmm. Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. How I many know we're mm -hmm. all going to all gonna die one day? But how's it yeah. You say, you know, yeah. get your house in order. In other words, get your wheel together. What it, <coughs> start playing it. Get, mm -hmm. So things will be ready for when, you know, if I'm, I'm gone. And God is saying, get your house in order. You're not going to, we're not going to live forever. Okay? Mm -hmm. So get your house in order. He said 2025 mm -hmm. is going to be the year to get your life in order. So it must be, you know, mm -hmm. some people wow. just wow. might not be quite ready, but you want to mm -hmm. get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Stay rapture ready. You know, serve the Lord with your heart. Get your heart right. <clears throat> That's good. Get it, get it together. Get your heart. You're, again, 
Again, somebody say, well, let me go to the hospital and get my heart right. Let me go make sure everything is. No, we're not talking necessarily physical. And you do want your physical body yeah. in shape, yeah. okay? You want that so you can feel good and sure, okay? But the, but the house yeah. he's talking about in order is your spirit. <clears throat> That's right. Your born again spirit. That's where he's coming out. He, you know, the body is going back to the dust of the earth, okay? But your spirit will live forever. We are made of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Your body <clears throat> going to the grave if, 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 if he doesn't come before you. But your spirit man <clears throat> go back to God. Okay, it'll go back to God. You want it in order, okay? So make sure you, you know, forgive. It's, it's, there's so much unforgiveness out there, so much Amen. hatred, <laughs> so much people just look, just judging other people and just listen. Just let people be who they are. And you just do your part. You just love them. Forgive them. What do you know? When you love them and forgiving them, you're getting your house in order. That's right. I think that's part of that's it. That's right. It's getting your house in order. Like, look, let's, let's, let's say, can you believe so-and-so did so-and-so? Well, forgive them because we too have made, you, you too have messed up. I too have messed up. <clears throat> so for, get your house in order <clears throat> because Jesus is coming. He really coming. I just read it to you in First Thessalonians, uh, fourth chapter. He says, he's coming, he's coming, and I'm telling you, you want things in an orderly manner. I mean, you know, thank God you've been saved. If you come to him and gave him your heart, your life, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law and by the blood of Jesus. Thank God for that. But you still want to have your, to be, you know, so you can see clearly, oh, this is that. Oh, you got... People are like, I just don't know what's going on. I can't fit. You're, you're blind because of your, the God of this world have blinded your heart through unbelief. <clears throat> so hear the word of God. Getting your house in order. You're hearing the word of God. You can get things in order. You can say, oh, now I see. This is that. The spirit of God will do that. He'll show you things to come. That's Amen. what the purpose of the Holy Ghost is for, to yeah. guide you in all yeah. truth. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 24, King James Version, it reads like this. No man can serve two masters. <coughs> For either mm -hmm. he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one mm -hmm. and despise the other. You mm -hmm. cannot serve God and mammon. <coughs> so get your life together, you know. Sometimes James will call me and say, oh. Uh, I'm coming home in uh, about an hour or so now. Get, get, be ready because I want to go so-and-so, so-and-so. <laughs> well, you know, I don't. <clears throat> well, sometimes I do. I get busy around the house cleaning. And, but it, I try not to wait to the last minute to get ready because he said, be ready when I get there. Because see, if I don't be ready when he get there, what's that going to cause? Some strife and all this. And, and he might just leave me. Yeah, but he won't do that. I don't think he'll do that. <laughs> no, he won't do that. <laughs> See, that's part of getting your house in order, too. It's like, if she's not ready, yeah. if things are not like I thought it would be, good. I patient, I kindly wait on it, and I'll try to, what can I do? Can I help you do anything? That's getting your house in order, yeah. you know? Forgiving and loving and like me. <clears throat> And men, women just take a little bit longer. Yeah. You know? Amen. You remember? <laughs> and and, and the women, she's my glory. Scripture says, she's my glory. Her <laughs> hair is her glory. Your woman's hair is her glory, okay? Uh. So she wants her hair fixed. That woman, so it takes a little bit longer. Now, men, when you get in the mirror and you get, it takes you that long, something wrong. <laughs> There's an inversion that have taken place, and it is not a godly inversion, okay? <laughs> Something is wrong. You ain't got to do all that. That woman, that's her nature. It's in her because she wants to look good for her man. Amen? Okay? Now, we don't want, we want to fix up, too. We don't want to look bad and just any old thing, no, but sometimes she has to get home. She says, now, you don't want to go out like that. Put something else on. Okay, thank God. Listen, she is my help me. She helps me to get my house in order, all right? She is my help me. You want to get your house in order. Oh. Amen. <laughs> you know, in this world, we have become so focused about me, myself, and now how we look and this and that, and we post and this. You know, right. it's all about the outer appearance. You know, we come walking mm -hmm. in the church and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. How, how you doing? Praise the Lord. I'm doing just fine. Mm -hmm. But how mm -hmm. is the... How is the house? How is your, your spirit? How, how are you really? Yeah. Because it says this in yeah. uh, 1 yeah. Samuel chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 7, a new uh, NIV version says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. 
The Lord mm-hmm. does not look. Okay, now this is my reading again. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. See, we all look at the outer appearance. Oh, God, did mm-hmm. you see that mm-hmm. outfit she had on? Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. did you see that car he was driving? We, we're That's so right. focused That's on right. the uh-huh. outer appearance, okay? Mm-hmm. The Lord mm-hmm. does not look mm-hmm. at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So yeah, what am I saying? Yeah. You know, we, <coughs> we're we so focused on how we look on the outside. We got to have everything right, makeup mm-hmm. right, and all this. And, nothing, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But God mm-hmm. is saying, I'm concerned about the heart. See, he was going to anoint mm-hmm. David. He told him to go. He said, go there to Jesse's house, and I want you to anoint him. So mm-hmm. when he got there... You know, he's looking at all his sons. He thought, well, it's going to be this one. It's going to be that one. Is it going to be that one. It's going to be that one. But see, he was looking at the That's outer right. appearance. That's right. yeah. He said, is it somebody else? You got, you got any more kids? Mm-hmm. He said, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. one. He's out there tending the sheep, mm-hmm. you know, as if mm-hmm. he was a nobody. But it was David. Yeah. He yeah. said, come on in. <coughs> he was the one mm-hmm. that it. So God is saying, get your heart ready. You know, we, we're so focused on how we look. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. But God is saying, how's your heart? How's your heart? Do you love me? Mm-hmm. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to have to check, at, check that heart out. That's very important. You know, just like the physical heart, it pumps blood over your body. Now, without that heart functioning, you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. You're in a mess. Yes, okay? Lots did. of people now are <laughs> sitting there waiting on for a heart transplant in the natural. And that heart is very important. They can't do nothing. Laying up in the hospital just waiting. Waiting for somewhere. Maybe I could, uh, hopefully, the next in line is something happened to where they can take a heart out of somebody and put in you in physically. So you can function in life. And then so it is. So in the spirit realm, you want your heart to be prepared yeah. and ready. Yeah. In line with God. Because I'm telling you, <coughs> he's, he's coming. God is coming. He said, he was saying in the, uh, in the as we were talking earlier that about that Second Timothy, the third chapter, and again, in the Living Bible translation, again, he says this, you know, the day that we live in, y'all, it's like, it's, it's not easy out there. My heart go out for the, for the kids going through school, through high school, through college, because, man, they're, they, it's messed up. They, something's wrong. <laughs> Signs of the times, Jesus is coming. In 2 Timothy, the third chapter, this is what the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, and this out of Living Bible Translation. He said, you may as well know this too, Timothy, that in the last days, it's going to be very difficult to be Christian. Very difficult to be a Christian. Yeah? For people will love only themselves and their money. Isn't it the truth? <laughs> people ain't got time for God. Amen. They ain't got time for God. Like, I got to, oh, no. I, 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 you know, when we were coming up, and my wife was telling it that, Every time the doors of the church is open, mm-hmm. my parents, you going to that church. Wednesday night, you going, you going to get out there. Sunday morning, <coughs> Sunday regular service, and Sunday night, you have service, you going to the church. We know it was no if, ups, buts, or end. You going to church. And thank God that our parents today taught us and trained us up. But God said, people will love only themselves and money, for they will be proud and boastful, sneering at God, disobedient to their parents. Are we there? <laughs> ungrateful to him or to them and fairly bad they will be hard-headed and never give in to others they will be constant liars and troublemakers and will think nothing of immorality they will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good <laughs> they will be betray- they will betray their friends they will be hot-headed puffed up with pride prefer good times to worshiping God. They will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken in by people like that. Now that's saying something. That's translation out of living Bible, okay, but that is saying something, y'all. We are in that day. It's, it's here. I'm seeing, I've never in my life seen anything like what we're going through now. And I'm, like, I'm like, Lord, even you can feel that spirit. You can feel, even myself, I'm like, Lord, now, what is wrong with me? You know, he said the love of many will wax cold because iniquity will abound so heavy. And, and in this day, because iniquity, sins, and just mess what you see on the media and everywhere. It's just, 
People have no respect for the parents, no respect for the pastor, no respect for just whatever. And just listen, you could be telling them what God said in the word and they'll just come up and tell you like, oh, well, I ain't got to do that. Like my wife was saying the other week, I'll just go and uh, get my license. So I, I'll marry people. I'll do it myself. I'll go and I'll baptize them and I can do it. No respect, no order. No. You're going to get all mess around and get over into an area of familiar spirits. Get messed up over there, you know. But anyway. <coughs> God loves you, he loves me, and he's saying to us, get your house in order. Y'all, we, we got to get in order. He's coming. Amen. He's coming. Yes. I'm telling you, he's coming. And the world say, I ah, don't look like the me he's coming. Listen, the, the times, the conditions are ripe for his return. Now, it's, he's coming. <laughs> Closer than in our time, anyway, we ever seen in life, okay? We don't know the day or the hour, but he's going to quit. So, you know, I probably just get your house in order. And that's what I hear the Lord say. So I'm just telling you what he said is get your mm -hmm. house in order. Uh, um, mm -hmm. <coughs> we're so concerned about how we look, and we just don't even consider about our heart, how we're acting. But, you know, I don't know. I keep mm -hmm. hearing you can fool some people some of the time. <laughs> anyway, I don't know how God. I'm hearing that, but anyway, <laughs> but you know you can't fool God. He He knows your heart. Mm -hmm, but he, mm -hmm. th listen, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 27, King James version, these are the Pharisees, and they thought they were righteous. They thought they were ready, you know. But that's what He told them. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees! See, they look good on the outside. Mm -hmm. They praying, they doing that thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. They looking holy. Mm -hmm. He said, but. He said, hypocrites, for you are like unto white sepulchres, <laughs> which indeed appear <laughs> beautiful outward. <laughs> See, they look good outward. <clears throat> oh, man, they stepped into the church. Like, oh, here comes so-and-so. Here come bishop. Here come this, whoever. He looking good. He can pray. But, uh, <laughs> 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 he said, which indeed appears beautiful outward, mm -hmm. but are within full of dead man's bones. And of all yeah. uncleanness. Yeah. Like I can say you can fool mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. some of the time, but you can't fool God, okay? Even mm -hmm. so, ye also outwardly appear <coughs> righteously unto men. See, they appear, but within ye are full of hypocrisy, hypocrisy and iniquity. In other words, they thought they were just it. And God mm -hmm. is saying, no, this ain't it, your heart. Get your heart right. Mm -hmm. Get your heart right. Get your life together. Mm -hmm. It look good. But God said, I can see your heart. They wasn't, they wasn't righteous like they thought. So my point of it is that get your, mm -hmm. get your life together. Get your, get your house in order. Like I said, he said this. I, I don't even know what it means. Sometimes I have to wait time on, mm -hmm. see what all it means. But he said, get your house in order. We don't mm -hmm. know. When, nobody knows when they're going to die. We, know, we, mm -hmm. we don't know when our last breath is going to be on this earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to be ready when God come back for you. You, know, you don't mm -hmm. want to be out there just... Just lolly la living part of him, part over there one day, you know. You see, it might be today, it might be tomorrow. I, I'm like this, I'm ready to go down, Lord. Anytime you want to come and get me, this is getting so bad. I just, I'm ready to go. I, I might, my husband said, You're selfish. I thought, Maybe it sounds selfish, <laughs> but I'm ready to go. I, you know, I, I, so you know, as you get older, you realize you got more people on the other side. Going on over there, then you get on this side. So like, hey, what a, go mm -hmm. over and have a reunion, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. it, it might be next month, might be <coughs> next year, but God is saying, get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Again, in, and she was saying in Matthew uh, 23 and 27, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto woe. great sorrow woe. will come upon you. Woe unto hypocrites. <laughs> God said, he said, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, as she was saying, okay? Well, you know, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but uh, within full of dead man's bones yeah. and of all uncleanness. Uh, actually, a, a person who is whited, talking about whited sepulchres, sepulchres, graves or whatever, he said there's a person who is outwardly virtuous, but is actually wicked and corrupt inside. You know, it's the hypocrite, you know, the portraying one thing, but in the heart, you know, the heart is not right. You know, you can't fool God, though. It, you can't fool God. It's like, <laughs> think about it. He's merciful. He's loving. And he's sitting right there. And I said, Lord, that's got to be mercy out of all my junk and my filth. 
<laughs> and you still love me. And just like, I said, oh, and you know, when he reveals something to you, you see yourself, you go like, oh, my Lord, I'm saying. He knew it all the time. Yeah. I said, oh, God, forgive me. It's, look, God, forgive me, God, I, of what I did. I, just forgive me, God. He said, that's when I confessed it before him. It's not, that's not when he found out about what I did. <laughs> that's when I get rid of it. <laughs> He knew all about what I'd done. He know it. I said, God, forgive me of that. And Lord, I, I can't do this because I it. No, no. <laughs> he knew all about it. He knew it. He said, that's why he went to the cross and he died for us, okay? But he said, come. Yeah. Yeah, come. He said, he, that's love, y'all. Jesus loved us so much. And I'd be like, oh, he ain't going to love me. Look at what I did. And all the time, he's right there. And he said, I love you. Yeah. And they're like, Lord. That is real love. It's, it's like beyond your natural thing. Like, he loved me that much? How? That's love. We, I can't even describe it. The love of God. He paid that price. Out of all these years, my 60-some years, out of all of my mistakes and all of my sins and all of my iniquities, God, and he's still saying, I forgive you and I love you. And I said, oh. And we should get shame when we see our wrong. We should be embarrassed, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Mm. <laughs> you know, you, you think that you got to do it yourself, but if you just surrender to God and just say, Lord, here I am. I, I got some issues in my life. I don't know what to do. Lord, just help me. And he'll help you. He'll show you. Now, when he show you, yeah. Yeah. that's when you got to step out there. He'll give, mm -hmm. he'll give you the, the ability, the anointing to do it. <coughs> but if, you, if he show you and then you think, oh, you know, uh, give me a, I'm going to give you an example of you know, like I said, I had my life together, you know. <laughs> and uh, me and James, I've been married, serious. I got a child. I mean, you know, I'm serving the Lord. And, and we were going to, to the mountains to get some apples one day. And as we began to pull out the drive, we're going on. I'm about half asleep. And I just heard this. You need to deal with this. And I thought, I looked at James. I thought, well, he didn't say that. Who's, who said it? I Then I heard it again. He said, you need to deal with this. I, to myself, I said, Lord, deal with what? I thought I done did everything you told me to do. What do you want me to do now? But like my flesh is falling off. <laughs> he said, you need to deal with this. See, the day that I got married, and I'm not going to all that, but me and Jane broke up a couple of times, this and that, and, and I got hurt and all that. So when he come, come back and said, let's get married, I thought, <clears throat> yeah, right. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we started playing, and, and, I, and I, thought, I had a thought. I thought, well, we can get married, but I'm not going to give you my heart. Not like I did before. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm not going there because I don't want to get hurt no more. And I, I knew right now God just showed, he just showed it to me. It was like, it was like the day you walked down the aisle, you didn't give him your heart. You, you got married, but you didn't give him your total heart like you did in the beginning. I said, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 he, he opened it up to me and I just started crying right there in church. James said, you okay? I said, yeah, but God is t telling me I need to tell you that I'm sorry. I, I said, James, I'm sorry that I didn't, I really didn't forgive you. I married you, but I still had this something in my heart that I just hadn't let go. And uh, I thought that, I, I said, I'm sorry. I thought, well, it's over with. <laughs> go get the apples and come on home. I don't tell God I'm sorry. I, I, I love him in my heart. Y'all, it took me three years. I, and I'm still dealing with it because I would get mad. And the Lord said, you're not mad about what just happened. It's just something stupid. You're mad about what happened in the past, long time ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> I'm trying to deal with this. <clears throat> See, get your heart right. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, okay, I'm going to get myself together. I thought I had myself together and going on, you know, and he would do some little things. He likes to drive, and don't tell me where you're going. <laughs> but she's with me. Oh, uh, we're going down the highway, and all of a sudden, I said, honey, where are you going? Oh, I'm going so, I didn't know. Well, it used to, it was hard to make me mad a little bit, and I could hear the Lord say, don't go there. <laughs> Don't you go there. Don't you go there. I mean, I dealt with this back and forth about for three years and still working with it. And then he said, 
I want you to redo your vows. And this time when you redo your vows, you know, give me your whole heart. Okay, Lord, okay. I thought, Lord, I, I got in my spare time. My son said, Lord, but he hurt me. <laughs> he said, so? Forgive him. Okay, Lord. Uh, don't he have to say I'm sorry or something? Just, can he say something? That, but it was, it was, I said, Lord, why is it always me? Why, why, why have I got the... I felt like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this. And I'm, I'm confess, I am totally different, right? I've changed. I've changed. I don't get. I don't. I don't get upset like I used to. But I didn't realize what I was getting upset. Cause it, it was building over years, over years, over years, over years, and then I had to deal with it to get it off of me, so I could go on with my life. But in a way, she won't hurt a flea. Uh, like, uh, we on uh, earth, and as long as we on uh, earth, there's gonna be trials, there will be tribulations, uh, there's gonna be ups and downs. I don't care how. <laughs> listen, you, 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 y'all know how that. Oh, I just we had such a good time today. We did this, we did that, we went here. Oh, we just prayed God. Maybe we got together and prayed and just worship and praise God. And before you go to bed, yep. What, what, what is that? Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He's seeking whom he made the vow. God said, whom resists him steadfast in the faith. So you got to go back to the word. Go back to the word. Go back to the word. As I don't care day in, day out. Satan is the God of this world. And he after you. And he don't want you to succeed. He don't want you to go for it. He's trying to stop you with everything in him. He hates you. He with passion. He hates you. He hates me. He hates God. Yeah. So yeah. when we, when you get saved, and you got saved, and you come to God, and when they told you that lie, it's like, oh, you got it made now. Well, that's just part of it, all right? You, get, you, you thank God, you eternal life. Praise God for that. But now, listen, Satan is seeking whom he made the vow. God said, who resists him yeah. steadfast in the faith. It's the word of God is going to, it's the only thing to give you the strength to sustain it. If you're not in the word, you you mean know, I cussed your wife out, or your wife cussed you out, or whatever. You you have to go back to work. when I start getting weak, I get cross. As is, I get grumpy. I get it's like just go outside. I have to get sometimes. Maybe you have to pull away, pull away from. I love. We have good times. We have fun. But it just it don't take long. Go out. Just go out there. Just I said, sometimes I say, honey, maybe. I say, you, you want to go pray? And I'll go <laughs> over here. You want to go? We, because you're human. And it's going to happen. And Satan is out there. He don't care. He, he don't want you to see. He don't want you to go, go for it. So what we do, you know, sometimes we tell things and say things. that It may embarrass me and my flesh. But if to help somebody else, it's okay. It's okay. I want to help somebody else. Because Satan has lied to us. The so-called church have lied to you, making it look like that you all live here. Oh, I want to be like so-and-so. It's just like, I don't let religious man. Just come on down. Be yourself. God is the one redeemed us, you know, from the curse. He, he'll set us free it's through Christ. Galatians 3.13 said Christ has, has redeemed us from the curse of the law. It's, it's a curse, man. It's just, he redeemed you. He brought you back to the Father, brought you back to God. So God said, come unto me. All you did laboring and you are heavy laden. God said, I'll give you rest. You ain't going to find it. I can come to my wife, honey. Okay, I, I'm confiding in her. You, you better. I mean, she's there. She should help me. She'll help you. But go to the word of God. Yeah. Ask yeah. him. And be when you come to him. Don't come. Oh, most holy father, thou art. I mean, you can do that. That's fine for you. But I'm like, just, just shut up. Lord, get that mess out of the way. Just say, Jesus. Lord, I told a lie. It was a pretty one. I mean, Lord, you know, I fixed it up, but it was still a lie. I mean, you know, it was like, well, did you do it? Well, it, just a little bit, Lord. It wasn't much. I didn't do as much as so-and-so. Just shut up. You told a lie. Repent. God, I was wrong. Judge yourself. And God said, then what? You won't be judged. It, He's saying what? Get your house in order. Yes. What we're trying to tell you is to get your house in order. Do just little things. You might think nothing about it. You know, just uh, on the job, you know, I, I took that ink pen or whatever. It's not, nobody ain't think nothing about it, but, but you stole it, didn't you? Was it yours? But, you know, we used to look at it that way. Today, it's like you think no more about it. Go get a hold. We'll just go ahead on and take them. It's all right. Company can afford it. But, but judge yourself. 
Coach Bob, your heart. Let's just, is it right? Is it? Now I say, Father, I took this. I know that. And I have done things. I said, God, I knew I shouldn't have did that. And I'm confessing before you. I was wrong. And Lord Jesus, I might end up going to do it again. But Jesus, thank you. You paid the price for me. Lord, I was wrong in what I'd done. Okay. He, he loved us. Thank God I'm not the one to save you. Thank God man ain't the one to save you. But Jesus, and he's with you. He said he would never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's there all the time. When we think he's not, when we don't feel him, we're not justified by the feelings anyway. We're justified by faith in God, in his word. So when you don't feel him, you better believe. That's when you better believe that he's there. Okay? Because he, he is. And he loves you. He loves me. Things are going on around. Listen to him. He's talking. He's talk, constantly talking to us. And we're waiting. Maybe we are looking at it a different way. Maybe look at it like my wife spoke to me. Sometime now, audibly, audibly, I only heard the voice of God very few times audibly. And I did hear like, whoa. At least it sounded like it's audible. Maybe the Holy Ghost said me speak. It sounded like, whoa. Lord, God, I like that. You know, but he's talking to you. Yes, he is. Be still. Get yes. quiet. And shut up. Look. Oh, you're just praying. Just a praying. You know, I'm just a praying. Just a praying. Oh, God. Help me, God. Show me, God. Don't go ahead. If you get still and shut up so he can talk. When my wife, I'm talking to her. How did this look? Honey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And honey, what do you think about this? And, what, and, she, and, and honey, I ain't give her a chance to answer me. Same way with God. We just go into it. Y'all don't know what I'm saying. It's reality. Okay? It's, oh, God. Like, and like, now get still. Be quiet. Okay, get still so we can talk to you. But time you get up and pray, and I'm talking about me, y'all. I'm, I'm okay, I'm talking, you done prayed, and before you even, uh, amen, holly, you are, your mind's already going, oh, I'm going to go do this, and I'm going to do that. Well, you just asked him what to do, and what, you, get, wait, listen, come before him. Thank you, Lord, praise him, worship him. Thank you. You getting that house in order? Get that house in order, hey, amen. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. mm. you know. And talk about getting your house in order. In the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-five, verse one through thirteen, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very good story to read. I'm trying to read some of maybe. Mm -hmm. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened mm -hmm. to ten virgins, mm -hmm. which took their lambs and mm -hmm. went forth to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Okay, they got to get ready. Mm -hmm. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Mm -hmm. They that were foolish took their lamps and mm -hmm. took no oil with them. Mm -hmm. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their, with their lamps. In other words, they were getting ready. Okay? <coughs> five were foolish and five was not foolish. Well, you know, wise, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. In other words, well, it didn't come when I thought. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. You know. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil, for our lamps are out, are gone out. In other words, they didn't get ready. But five of them was wise, they got ready. Like I said, get your house in order now. Don't wait till last minute, okay? Yeah. But the wise answer saying, no, not so. At least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye <coughs> rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. In other words, you go, you go get your own stuff. We, we prepared. You, you, you were lazy. You, mm -hmm. you just thought, well, we got plenty of time. But anyway, oh, well, yeah. and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And they were ready. <coughs> went in with him to the marriage, and the mm -hmm. door was shut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Afterwards mm -hmm. came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord. <laughs> See, they wasn't ready. <laughs> they was not ready. <coughs> they didn't get the house in order, Okay. Open up to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. You, wanna mm -hmm. be, you don't want to be like that. He's saying, get your house in order. Get ready mm -hmm. now. You know, prepare yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. And listen, if we go through some bad storms and bad trials, we don't, <laughs> actually, we don't know. Whoever gets in, I think it's going to be chaos. That's, I'm gonna be, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. But if you got mm -hmm. your house in order, you can go right through it. You'll have peace. You'll have joy. You look over there and see them people go, you know, mm -hmm. stupid and crazy. And you got peace and joy because you got your house in order. You got a love walk. You can love them anyway. You know, people this day and time, you, they're just crazy. They're just, I've never mm -hmm. seen so much anger on people's faces. Sure just, that's the least little oh, thing. Yeah. You're standing mm -hmm. in line. You want to say, 
what are you so angry about? And you, mm-hmm. you, you can't hardly say anything to him. I told you, do not blow your horn at nobody no more because mm-hmm. these people are crazy. <laughs> sure is. It is. It's bad. It's letting you know that those are the signs. Yeah. Satan know he ain't got but a little time left. And he's like he done beefed up his kingdom, beefed up his stuff. And listen, he got some good ones out there, boy. They're obeying. <laughs> like, good gracious. I'm like, uh, what in the world are you? You, you, you don't know how you, you're seeing people, you, good morning, how you doing? Like, what's so good about it? Like, good <laughs> gracious, man, just, just, you know, we don't know. I, I try to, when, when people be a little cross or angry or upset, we don't know what kind of day they have. We don't know what they have done gone through, and I try to look at that and consider that, you know, and, you know, be merciful too, but. But God says that for us to let our light shine before men, that they might see the good works and glorify our Father. So when we come up on people, there have been times that this lady one time, remember we, she, her countenance, most people, sad to say, most people, her countenance just sad. So you know something's wrong. You don't know in the world. I, I don't know, maybe bills are due, maybe a hand. I don't know, maybe ha- going through a divorce. Or you don't know what to come. You don't know the person. And at the cash register, so we just let our light shine. Yep. Hello, I just smile at them. And the lady, she said, and she, you know, we can actually change yeah. the conditions around you, okay? And she looked at me, she said, you made my day. And they're like, I ain't do nothing. So I thought I didn't do nothing. But God says, we are the light of the world, Christians. We are the salt of the earth. And let your light so shine before men. And I, that don't mean all the time you got to go and preach to yeah. them. Just let him lead you. It should radiate within us who you are in Christ Jesus. And you come up at your demeanor. How is it? You, you approach the people. You come up. It should be able to change your atmosphere. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I heard uh, my, my brother-in-law uh, uh, told me one time we were working together. And he was, he was quiet. He always be quiet. And there in the office, be sitting in the office, and a bunch of people be in. And when or when I come in with the bus or when I get back, he was sitting in. He be sitting in the office. And he he was real quiet. He did. He just observed. Okay. He he just quiet. And he told me one day. He says, he says when the people. He said when you come in, you change the the whole place. And I said, I do. I didn't know that. He said, yeah, the people change when you come in. He said, they just change. I didn't know that. Well, we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And even though there are those like unlovely, unlovable, a lot of them, you know, but yet when trouble will come, guess what they would do? They said, James, will you pray for me? Will you pray for my mother? And I'm like, what? And so I would right then pray for him. Sometimes I maybe take them aside and go up on the bus or something. I say, let's stand up in here and let's just say, you know, lay hands on them. I would pray for same people. Say, I wouldn't do that. I'm not ashamed. And apparently they wouldn't because they come and they call. They saw something and they would ask me, pray for me, help me do this. Because it would be some is like, oh, my Jesus, you need to go to Jesus. But you don't tell them that. You just love them. Just let your light shine. Love them. And after a while, by them seeing your life, you know what I'm saying? They seeing you. Thank God, maybe perhaps my house was more in order. <laughs> That's what yeah. we try to do again. You know? Then they will come, and I'm like, wow. You? I be thinking, you asked me to pray for you? But I didn't even think you even acknowledged God. Or not, you know? Well, that's who we are as Christians. You should change that atmosphere by our living, by our love in Christ who is in us. It's him. It's not us. It's him, because we go to thinking it's us, we'll go to boasting. We'll go to, ah, yeah, you know, I've been in church for so and so time, and I taught Sunday school for so many years, and I did this, and I preached, and I did this, and I did that. Shut up. You ain't done none of it. <laughs> it's Christ. The hope of glory is in it. He's the one. It's all about Jesus. And he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. Okay? And you want to be ready when he comes. Yeah. Amen? Mm-hmm. So, you know, 2025, mm-hmm. like I heard the Lord say, <laughs> Mm. I know he's talking to me. 
Just mm -hmm. get your life, you know, and get your house in order. You know, sometimes it's those little foxes in our life that, that hinder us from going forward. Mm -hmm. We can walk into the church, we look good, we're all dressed up, we got the right makeup on, you know, <laughs> just decked out, mm -hmm. and everybody's like, wow, look, mm -hmm. look there. Mm -hmm. But what about your heart? How, how you, you know, how, how's your love walk? How's, you know, <coughs> when you walk out of church, do you think Satan's just going to let you just go out there and just enjoy life and not, not be dealt with any kind of problem? <laughs> you want to run into some cake. Mm. Sometimes it might be before you leave the church. It might be the kids. It might be your, your spouse might make you mad. I don't know. But he's out there. I mean, listen, we, 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 <laughs> this, this, come on, let me talk right quick. <laughs> we were coming back from somewhere. I forgot where we was coming. I think maybe in Washington, D.C. And we, I was tired. Jane said, let's just stop and get something to eat. And I said, okay, we can, be. it was getting late. <laughs> I'm gonna run in here and just, just have a nice meal with my husband. Uh, he ordered his steak, I ordered the steak. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so we're sitting there waiting for our food. And like I said, Satan will try you. <laughs> I'm sitting there. She had on her new clothes, you know, <laughs> new blouse. All of a sudden, something splashed on my hair, <laughs> on my clothes, <laughs> on the picture it was beside raining, me. And it ain't raining. <laughs> <laughs> the little boy behind me was just <laughs> had the high and 57. He was mm -hmm. just doing like this, and his parents mm -hmm. sitting there, and it just splashed all on me. It went everywhere. It popped out. It just on the now wall. Now, my first thought was <laughs> take that joke out and beat his behind. <laughs> but, I, but all of a sudden, I could hear the calmness of God. The peace of God came on me. It's like, let it go. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I thought, okay, mm -hmm. Lord. <laughs> They were so afraid that they didn't even say anything. Nothing. The waitress came up. And she say, was, I'm sorry. She was, the Nothing. waitress was trying to oh, wipe it off and, and all this. And then the manager came up. And she said, we're so sorry this happened. We're so sorry. And, uh, and then she came. She had a rag. She was trying to write, wipe it. I said, it's okay. Everything's okay. So I sat there. I held my peace. I walked in love. I wanted to, like I said, jerk him up and take him outside. Mm -hmm. At the end, when the bill came, the manager came up and said, man, we're so sorry what happened to you. We're going to take your, mm -hmm. what is my, mm -hmm. my bill off, my, yeah. uh, off the bill. Take yours off the bill. Mm -hmm. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said I had to remain calm because if I mm -hmm. acted up, you they might have they they tell me, hey, <laughs> walk out. Anyway, <laughs> get your house in order. You know, that's good. That's good. Just get the house in order. We hope you got something out of this. Yes. Amen. But listen, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then we would like to introduce you to him again out of Romans, the, the 10th chapter, in verse 9. He says, if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe yes, in your yes. heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Because yeah. with the heart men believe in the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So as we come before God and we, you do that, you ask him. Ask him, and listen, quit going by what you feel, all right? We are not justified by your feelings, yes, you know, because they, they can be up and down, <laughs> and they're, if you go by that, you'll be misled. You've got to go by faith. So faith come by hearing, hearing by the word, and that what you hear in your word, in the spirit, the word of God. If you felt that, if you sensed that in your spirit, and you hear it, God got your attention, then confess it. Open your yes. mouth and just say, Lord. I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. You have confessed it with your mouth. You believe it in your heart, not your blood pump, but again, your, your spirit. You believe in your spirit. The God raised from the God said, you shall be saved. It, it is so simple to it'll go over your head. Because everything in this life you work for. And you find yourself trying to work for your salvation. If you're not careful, it happens without even thinking about it. I did it for years. But faith, just trusting and believing what God says. And you might not feel nothing right the way. But just be patient. <laughs> and you'll get some confirmation there. The Spirit all of a sudden like, wow. Whoa, you, you're not like you used to be. Something unchanged. You got a new life now. You allow Jesus to come in. And he can do what you can't do. Amen.
And I love feelings. When they come, they'll come. Baba. But don't base it on feelings because when you feel, you, when things are up, you up. When things are down, you're not. The economy up, I'm up. I'm good. Don't depend on that. Depend on the word of what God says. And then when the economy is down, you can still be up because Jesus is Lord. Right. He's in you. He lives within you. You'll make it. You can be out. Just listen to him. Do what he tell you to do. You're going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Okay, so welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the kingdom. Okay. okay. Now, in the Romans, of those that are uh, in our offering again, we'd like to, to bring this before God to 2 Corinthians. Again, again, the Apostle Paul saying to the church in Corinth. And... Uh, Verse 6, he said, This I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So it's according to what you give and how you, each person, is God leading guide you. Verse 7 says, Every man according as he had purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. I, I wasn't too cheerful back in the 90s when God told me, to bring one dollar. He said, shouldn't you bring one dollar for every five? I wasn't too cheerful, come man. I didn't know where my next meal was coming from. I didn't know, but he was training me. I believe he was in training. He was teaching me, okay? But thank God, I listened and obeyed. It took me a couple of years to obey him. A couple of years, yeah. I struggled with it. I fought it. <laughs> and every time I go to God to pray, I needed something. All I could hear him is saying, shouldn't you bring one dollar? And I'm like, Lord, I need, I, I, he said, shouldn't you bring so finally, I told my wife, I said, honey, I said, I got to obey God. I messed up. I said, I'm going to do what he said do. Say, we got to pay 20%. Somebody else may not, I don't know what God tell you, but above the 10%, I had to go another 10%. That's what he told us to do. <coughs> and I said, Lord, I will do this. So that was in the early 90s. We obeyed. Obeyed and lost everything we had, but it's okay. I mean, oh, this was just a test. <laughs> We obey, and boy, is he, he opened the door, he blessed, and he's still opening doors, and we learn to trust him. I had to learn to trust him. He would do what he said to do, okay? He said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. He able, that you always have an all-sufficiency in all things. May abound to every good work. Amen? Amen. He'll take care of you. He love you. So you be blessed, yes. and we pray. And we, Father, I ask you, Lord, if I give him that what we'll give him brought before you in faith. We know that it's faith that move your hands. And, Father, we have sown our seed. I thank you. You will meet our needs. We believe that. Yes, and we set ourselves in agreement with those, God, that who have given. Lord, and I know they may need it. I know I've been there. But, God, I believe that you are trying to get it to them. You're trying to sustain them and keep them, to trust you. And God, we thank you now for supplying and meeting their needs that men give in their bosom. Yes, that it will come where we don't know, but we know you're faithful to your word. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.